I spent an entire vacation and several weekends building that shed. Well, it looks very nice. Well, thank you. What I want to do is get a wood shingle look on the front of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing about wood shingles, though, is they go up one at a time, and it takes a lot of time to install them. Well, they can be time consuming because you're right. They go up one at a time and two nails in every shingle. So they can be time consuming. Well, a few years ago, I saw you guys use a product like this. Oh yeah, this is a cementaceous product. It's made of uh, cement, sand, and cellulose. It has a, a simulated wood grain. And look at this, when I lay it on top of this pile right here, right, I've got a simulation of six shingles. So I'm actually putting up six shingles at a time. It does go up quick. That sounds really good to me. The first thing I need to do, though, before we get started, is locate the stud pattern. So I go to the edge of the door, I hook my tape on, and I find 10 and a half, 26, 43 and a half, and 57. What I'll do is I'll transfer those measurements to the outside of the wall and run some lines down. Okay, now we know where we're going to put our nails. Before we install the siding, I'm going to install this Z channel on the bottom trim at the lower part of the wall. Okay, and that'll keep the water from getting behind the trim itself. Right, and when you're using a cementaceous product, you want to make sure that the aluminum is coated because you'll get a reaction from the cement and the siding causing the aluminum to rot. Great tip. Okay, now first thing I want to do is I want to caulk the corners. And now we want to push the flashing right into the wet caulking. And that will seal the ends. A couple of tacks. The siding manufacturer would like to see the first row of the shingling flared out a little more than the rest of the wall. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to put this lath right here, right over the top of the flash. And I want to keep it up about the thickness of my finger. So I'm just going to tack this in place. If I take a piece of siding and I put it on the wall right now, this is what we are left with. We can actually see our fellow strip and the felt paper. And rain can get behind there, and that's not good. So what we need to do now is install another filler strip over our first filler strip using the same type of material, but one that's used as clapboard siding. That will fill that gap. So I'm going to mark my length and cut the board. There's a few different ways to cut this fiber cement. One is simply use a utility knife and a straight edge and simply score it on both sides. After I score it, I simply pick up the other end and snap it. I've cut the filler strip a quarter of an inch shorter than the distance between the two pieces of trim. Well, why is that, Tom? I want to allow for expansion and contraction, not only of the trim, but the siding. And I also want to have a gap to put some caulking in. What I don't want is this starter strip to sit on top of the flashing. I want to create a space because if it sits in the water, it will rot the siding. So I'm going to move it up about a quarter of an inch, pushing the siding into that wet bead of caulking. And now I'm going to nail it right in where the stud is. These shingles are actually 16 inches high, and the manufacturer recommends that you put a 7-inch reveal when coursing the shingles. Now, by reveal, you mean how much of the shingles actually exposed to the weather. Exactly, and see how nice and flat they sit to one another. Now, where the siding meets the trim, I want to make sure I run a nice bead of caulking in there to make the joint watertight. We also know that our siding is 12 inches wide and I want the bottom of the siding to be even with our filler strip so I measured up 12 inches and ran a line. So the top of our shingles will be where the chalk line is. Right. I also want our shingle to end up on this stud right here so I cut that to length. Now we're ready to put the first shingle on. So I'm going to put it on, I'll space it away from the trim about an eighth of an inch and then we'll just nail it so it's on the line. With my shingle in position, I want to nail into the stud. So I follow that line down to I'm about the top of our filler strip. And I want to nail right into the filler strip. If I nail up too high, there's a void here and I run the risk of breaking the shingle. Whenever installing siding, there are three very important things to remember. First is you want to make sure that none of the joints line up 
and none of the slots line up. That's so water can't get behind the siding. Exactly. I also want to make sure that the siding ends on a stud for nailing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the siding, slide it to you. I'm going to hold this end on a stud for our nailing. Check my slots. None of them line up. And then you mark our length. I'm ready to cut the next shingle that has to go around the windowsill. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the shingle into position under the window sill. Next I want to measure the distance between the end of the sill to the trim, so I'm going to mark that. Next I want to know the dimension between the trim on the corner and the window casing. I'm going to space it out slightly and mark that. And the last place is I want to know how deep or how high to make this cut at the top of the clapboard. I'm going to put it on my reference line. I'm going to mark the depth of the sill and I'm going to cut this piece out. I'm going to push it up into that groove. Okay. All right. That looks good, Tom, right there. Okay. Tommy, what are we going to do about this narrow spot under the window? Under the window, we're going to put the siding up as individual pieces. So to mark the height of those, I'm simply going to take the piece, put it upside down, push it tight against the window sill. You take the side of my chalk line, hold it underneath that row. Okay. I'll hold it under this row on this end, and then you snap the chalk line. Now I'll just push them up into the cocky. Keep the spacing, and I'll face nail them with some stainless steel nails. Jason, what color are you going to paint the building? Well, my wife wants green. Well, then green it is. Mm -hmm.